be welcoming to the stage John Medved, the CEO of Our Crowd, uh, along with Dan Maron, uh, the co-author of the Crowdfunding Revolution. For the kind invitation, and it's great to interview live on stage John Medved. He's one of the pioneers of crowd investing. He's a startup uh, nation enthusiastic. He speaks. Uh, it's, it's it's a really rare occasion to meet him in Israel. <laughs> it's a pleasure. That is for sure. Uh, I think that, uh, saying it humbly, I think that uh, for Israeli platforms, uh, China can uh, hopefully be a, a gospel not only in the uh, origins of new uh, sources of money, but also for uh, um, added value uh, in all sorts of uh, issues, and we'll be speaking about it a bit in a sec. Uh, I've been in China many times. Uh, the last time was two two months ago. We, we had the biggest crowdfunding event ever, 15,000 people in Guiyang. It was fabulous. Uh, but I think this event will be better because we have John here <laughs> on stage. So we have five questions. We'll, we'll take them brief. We'll take them short, dead style, if I may. And we'll try to make it uh, interesting for you. And we'll take three questions afterward. The best question will win a... Uh, a new book. Oh, okay, so uh, I guess that you already heard about John. His, uh, uh, his profile is being uh, everywhere, I guess. It's a, it's a, it's a compliment, don't take it otherwise. But I'd like to ask you just as a teaser five things we don't know about you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, I was expelled from Hebrew school. Uh, that, for those who don't know, that's like a Jewish school that you send your kids to after regular school, and I hated it so much that um, I was expelled, so that's another question of why I ended up here. Um, number two, uh, I'm well known for liking um, single malt and uh, Hawaiian shirts, but the real question is what kind do I like? So. The best Hawaiian shirt in the world is something called Jam's World, which you can get almost nowhere. You have to go to their uh, uh, shop in Oahu. And the best single malt in the world, in my opinion, is Spring Bank from Campbelltown. So uh, third thing, uh, how did I get my start in Israeli technology uh, with a small company called Raphael that was mentioned before as not being suitable for Chinese investment? Um, and uh, that's a long story, but basically I accompanied my late father for a visit there and a guy asked me what I was doing and I said tour guiding and hanging out and he called my life a waste he said you know in Hebrew booze totally total waste and I said what you know I, I actually used an expletive uh, and I said what are you talking about and he said look Israel has tons of guys like you what they need is more guys like your dad go help your dad in uh, in fiber optics so that's why I got started uh, number four, what's the worst miss I've ever had as an investor? Well, back in, I think it was 98 or 99, I have a very tall friend named Mark who started talking about this really cool idea in Silicon Valley about building a company to handle Salesforce management without software. And he said, our slogan is going to be no software, it's going to be great. And I said, Mark, love it. He was an ex-guy at Oracle, I was going to invest. Got ready to write you know, a personal check of some size. And I just said, before I write the check and send me the money, just tell me what the valuation is going to be. And this was in, you know, in front of the last bubble. And he said, uh, I think I'm going to ask for about 100 pre. I said, $100,000 only? And he looked at me, he laughed, no, 100 million, you idiot. And I said, You're, you, know, you haven't got started. You're asking for $100 million valuation? I mean, I love you dearly. I think you're a great guy. But this is complete crap. Forget it. I'm not in. That guy is Mark Benioff. The company was Salesforce. It's now worth you know, closer to 100 billion than it is to the original 100 million. So, a feast fools, um, or a, a miss. And uh, perhaps, uh, uh, I'm now up at number five. I'm at, I'm at number five. And we need to go home, so. <laughs> no, I'll make it. Short this no, no, I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, look. The, the biggest surprising thing when I started this business, our crowd, is that most people looked at me and my friends sort of made a repetitive joke. A lot of people did it. They said, look, we'll bring you kosher food to Leavenworth 
Leavenworth is the federal penitentiary where uh, white collar criminals go. And I would, in various ways, I'd say, what are you, what are you talking about? Why am I going to go to jail? I said, you can't offer securities to people you know, on the web. That's illegal. Yeah, someday the SEC will make it legal and whatnot, but you can't do it today. And I had read the laws, and I felt very strongly, as did my lawyer, uh, that we could be legal. And so, you know, uh, despite this advice, we went ahead and uh, built our crowd, and the rest has been pretty good. Thanks. So a month ago, the SEC just approved the, the job section. That's right. It took about four years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us a bit about our crowd, but not the usual pitch, but through two stories. And don't tell us only about su success stories, but tell us a bit about the downside as well. Uh, okay, so what our crowd is, is essentially a new kind of uh, funding mechanism for startups. Instead of going to a traditional venture capital fund or an angel investor and uh, getting a check, you essentially come to us and we then go out to the crowd and we bring you back a check. Now, the difference is subtle but important. Number one, we don't have a fund under the table. It's like not, we don't have bags of money, but we have 10,000, actually closer to 11,000 now, investors worldwide from 110 countries and they get a chance to look at these deals and they get to select the deal they'd like for 10,000 bucks on up. And once people select deals, we not only get a lot of money, we've, uh, we're close to $200 million invested in about two and a half years, which makes us probably the biggest investor in this country in terms of you know, small businesses. I don't think anyone else has put $200 million to work in two and a half years. So we get a lot of money. We've done 90 different companies. But we, the people who choose these deals love the deals, so they get involved. So a lot of our people are taking active roles on boards and providing uh, connections. So the surprising things, one, is that uh, anyone would actually take our money in the beginning, okay? Because when we showed up to companies that we wanted to invest in, and they'd say, okay, so tell me about your fund. And I'd say, we don't have a fund. I said, no, no, what are you, what are you talking about? You're here, you're trying to negotiate a term sheet, you're arguing with me about price and valuation. Where's the frickin' fund? Okay, and I said, there is no fund. I said, what do you mean? You want me to go through this whole process, I'm gonna negotiate with you, and then you're gonna tell me on a best efforts basis, you're gonna bring the money from the crowd, you know, inshallah, or in Yurtza Hashem, which means, you know, God willing? And I said, yeah, that's, that's the way it works. And the fact that people <laughs> agreed to do it uh, has been sort of a surprise and very, very uh, gratifying. The surprising news is that literally two weeks ago, we had our first failure uh, in terms of a failed fundraiser. Until now, every company that has gone on the platform, despite the fact that we didn't have a fund, has actually raised money. So we finally, and I had to be dragged, kicking and screaming to admit defeat. I said, no, we can't admit defeat. But the crowd simply didn't like this one deal, which I love, and I, I, I'm almost certain it's going to uh, make a lot of money. So Nathan or anyone else who's smart, go grab that company and invest in it uh, because it's a, it's a good company. It's called HeroX, which uh, makes a platform for uh, raising money for sort of like the X prizes. It's a very, very cool company, but we couldn't raise money for it. Did you invest in it, John? I'm, I'm not allowed to invest outside of our crowd anymore. Not oh. until I'm done. I, I'm a, a one-man kind of guy. I've been married for 30 years. I'm, uh, you know, it's too complicated one to have. Woman. I'm a, one, I'm a one-woman kind of man. One person. That's all right. One I'm, I'm, an, I'm monogamous, okay? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I just, I, I, I can't do it. It's too complicated. So I you know, do my investments through, through our crowd. Okay. Thanks for being honest. Uh, <laughs> Well, so we're in an Israeli-Chinese kind of conference, and what's the rele I guess if people are asking themselves, what's the relevance between our crowd and the audience here? So well, China is going to be the crowdfunding center of the universe, okay, if, if not already happening. Um, we have almost endless interest. It's a very, very unclear legal regimen right now in China, as many things are. You don't really know if it's legal or illegal until they carry you away. Um, but uh, uh, the Chinese government has just issued a couple of formal licenses. The problem is what you mean by crowdfunding. 
Because as we mentioned before, the, the Jobs Act in the US, which just got voted on by the SEC, this will allow everybody to crowdfund, right? You can be a bus driver or a school teacher, you have no income or asset test, and you can start putting money to work in the US if the portal is now properly registered with FINRA and whatnot. Final regs aren't in. China, I think, thinks more of crowdfunding that way, and there are a couple of licenses being issued, and these are small investors putting in literally a few dollars up to hundreds or maybe even a few thousand dollars, but that's not our kind of crowdfunding. We're crowdfunding for rich people right now. Okay, we, we do what's called accredited investor crowdfunding, so our initial investment starts at $10,000 and goes up to millions of dollars on a, on a specific deal with a specific person. We, are going to announce in the next couple of days our biggest deal ever where we actually raised more than 15 million dollars for a, a single deal. So it's a whole different ball of wax. And the way that we operate, because we take money only from these rich people who are called either accredited or sophisticated or qualified investors, even in China, then the authorities leave you alone. And they say that, you know, these guys, caveat and tour, it's a different regime. It's what we protect in terms of private investing. And uh, I think, though, that China is so hungry for this stuff. And it's not just for Chinese companies, but it's for getting involved in, in companies abroad. Because the reality today, if you look at the, um, the tech universe, investing in public tech companies, in my opinion, forget about it. Talk to your broker and say no more. Because if you look at what happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you could have bought Microsoft or Apple or Oracle, you could have made hundreds of times your money if you had held on to the stock. Actually, Microsoft was like 600, Oracle 700 times your money. What's the best you're going to make today in terms of alpha on a public stock? Facebook, right? The best of the, the bunch? Three times, four times your money. That's it. That's as good as it gets, guys. So if you want to make 10 times or 20 times your money like you used to be able to if you were a good stock picker, you got to go private. You've got to get into a private company. Now, it's not just people like me who understand this, or individuals, but it's all the, the big capital pools. So today, it's hedge funds and PE funds, and they all want to figure out, how do I play in private companies? So there's a, an, actually a Chinese company called uh, CSC, China Science and Merchants. I've never heard of them before. $12 billion uh, PE fund. And they just wrote a $400 million check to AngelList, one of our competitors. They have a different model. And they said, just spread it. Not investing in AngelList. On the 650 companies that had raised money on AngelList, they said, just take this and spread it. It's not clear how quickly they're going to spread it or whatnot. But this is heralding, actually, a, uh, a change that I think we saw was going to happen in crowdfunding, which happened already in uh, what used to be called peer-to-peer. -peer. Today, it's called lending marketplaces, which is it used to be individuals gave the money to be lent. Now it's all institutional money. 90% is institutional money. Same thing's going to happen to crowdfunding, I'm afraid, which is the individuals are still going to be involved, but the institutions are going to come. And the real ch challenge here is to make sure that the little guy doesn't get screwed again. Okay? Because to the extent that little guys are investing in second-rate companies that aren't the good ones, the good ones go to VC, and the, and the bad ones go to the crowd, that's, in my opinion, a perversion and the wrong thing to happen here in the end. So if you look at our platform, we're trying to keep it together, right? We, we, we aggregate everybody into a special purpose vehicle. We write a single big check, which we manage then that check. We write multi-million dollar checks. We buy preferred stock. We sit on boards. We do all that old fashioned stuff to protect our investors. And we co-invest with people like Andreessen or Sequoia or Excel or Bessemer Battery so you, or Mark Cuban or Eric Schmidt or Vinod Kosla so that you as a individual investor can write your $10,000, but not into a Sugbet company, not into a also ran, but into the, you know, the best of the breed. And I think the Chinese investors are going to find this very compelling. I think that the extent they can play in the best of Israel or Silicon Valley as an individual, and not just you know, watch the big guys take it and have it as an insider game, I think that's very disruptive. I think that the internet-based finance in China will be, it is huge and it will be even bigger. That's my next book. Uh, I think that uh, it's from payment to crowd investing, peer to peer, student loans, renewable energy. There are so many platforms. And I think that fintech companies can help this market, this industry as well. 
So I'd like to thank you, but before we, we leave, let's take three questions, if we may. Three I said something controversial. Oh, oh. Any questions? No, yeah, like yes. Any questions? Okay, right here. How do you see the blockchain uh, revolution uh, influence the, this specific uh, area? Um, I, I think it's extremely important, and in particular, we're looking right now at how do we create secondary liquidity on our platform for investors. So you invested in a startup. I mean, you guys, it's easy because you're almost you're a unicorn, and God willing, someday soon you'll be going public. You know, at, at Iron Source, so someone can buy in or buy out of your stock. But what happens? If you're this guy who's got a $30 million company and, and uh, Nathan or somebody else invested 50 grand with us, how do they get liquidity until you get to be iron source? And so we're going to be looking at building that kind of liquidity on platform, but we don't want to print a price, right? We don't want all of a sudden people to know that somebody bought and sold his stock at 20 million bucks because he's trying to get a round done at 50, okay? And he'll be rather angry at me if all of a sudden there's a publicly printed price. That's a perfect example of where blockchain can help you and take two people offline securely, and yet it's offline online, right? It's off platform, if you will, but it's online where people can, can conduct these trades. And I think that that kind of stuff would be impossible to really do properly without blockchain. One last question for John. Okay, I guess not. All right, thank you, Dan and John. Thank you.